How many of you are from Delhi? Okay, so you must have got some idea like how traffic moves in Delhi or how it does not move, both. And how it moved in Commonwealth Games I mean, for a change. And how Delhi was disciplined for 20 odd days. Okay, so I happen to be part of that one, so like maybe I'll discuss. The whole theme given to me is very loose, so like I thought, okay, like whatever comes to my mind, we'll keep on discussing. <coughs> Traffic management in Delhi. I think the most onerous job one can have in Delhi is to manage traffic or mismanage traffic, whatever way you can. And uh, whatever, like uh, I've been here in uh, traffic for more than a year, and let me tell you, managing traffic in Delhi is really, really difficult. And I sum up the whole problem in two, two sentences. The problems of Delhi are two. The people of Delhi who are indisciplined and traffic police, which is mostly corrupt. Okay? So I'll give a general scene like uh, how we have been growing. Uh, all of you must be familiar, but just for recapitulation, like uh, Delhi had five lakh odd vehicles in 1981 before the emergence of vehicular revolution started by some great man. Before that we had only Fiat's and ambassadors and then I think the boom started and the city is paying the consequences of it. So five lakh to, we became 19 lakh in 1991. 2001, we jumped to 35, and now we are quantumly jumping without any restriction. And I don't know where do we stop? Maybe like half of our waking hours we'll be spending on the roads, maybe then only we'll stop it. So already 70 lakh registered vehicle, and I don't know where do we stop. And no, let me tell you, nobody is thinking about it. At this moment, like there is no thinking in the anywhere in the city that the vehicular growth has to stop. Already, we have reached the situation where like things have become absolutely difficult, absolutely unmanageable. It has been for years city where road rage is very frequent. We curse. We curse, but don't do anything. Related to vehicular growth, like we have got, like I think I'm ashamed of admitting this fact that we have got maybe four times or five times the fatality on the road than the murders in the city. City murders are about 500, and city deaths on roads which is sometimes more damaging than even murders, is about 2,000 of them. And in 1981, when vehicular population was 5 lakh, we had to, used to have 1,000 deaths. I mean, uh, must have been pretty mismanaged managed that way. Like in 5 lakh, you have about 1,000. And now in 70 lakhs, we have 2,000. And for a change, 2010, that was my agenda, we seriously th did something, and uh, doing seriously was very simple. I'll tell you later. In a year about, we reduced two, 200 fatalities. Let me tell you 200 fatality where the experts, I'm not expert, like, like let, let me admit, uh, the only admission I, I want to make is, I'm the only non-expert in traffic police. Yeah. Rest of, most of my people are experts. And maybe like, uh, I mean a non-expert is managing traffic uh, through the experts. So like in uh, single stroke, like we reduced about 200 fatalities. How we did it, I'll tell you um, shortly. Okay. I don't know, there's some problem. Okay, talking on the macro level, I think our track record the, as a country, India has got 1% of the world vehicular population and 10% of road accidents. This is macro level all over India. Number of deaths per 10,000 vehicles, 1.6 in the United States and 14 in India. So our track record is 10 times worse than the average in the world. So I think we should be 
I mean, we, we should uh, really do some serious introspection, okay, like why we are so bad. Traffic is strength, I think that is uh, like that also keep on increasing, but always insufficient. At this moment, we have got about 6,000 of men who are just trying to manage traffic, 6,000 people in January 2011. Okay, like uh, the subject has been dear to me, like uh, for 22, uh, 22 years, I watched traffic from outside, and one year, I tried to do whatever I could do, I, which I thought was wrong with the city traffic, and like uh, we brought down the fatality by a simple measure, like I'll tell you. I know the psyche, I'm not an engineer, many of you are from engineering background, and my predecessor, many of them were from IIT, engineers, scientists, MSc, and whatnot. I, am, I happen to be a simple MA. I had no scientific background about traffic management. I think most, the qualification is that you, you should do traffic engineering, road engineering, and all this thing. But let me tell you, I know one thing, human psychology. Human psychology in uh, India, more so in Delhi is, if a traffic policeman is at an intersection, we behave. If not, we do not. And the simple thing I did, that was the third day, I remember 8th January 2010, I took over. 10th January, I told all my people, because I didn't know, because I had never worked in traffic police. So I asked them how many intersections we have got where like signalized intersection are there. So I was told 7.30. And I asked them, how, what is your traffic strength? That time it was 4,500. So I said, okay, why then traffic policemen are not seen on the intersections? And they had no answer because they were busy in what? Prosecution. And you know, prosecution means a lot of money, both through the state revenue and the police manuals. So I said, okay, come what may, like, okay, in peak hours from 8 to 11 and 5 to 9, traffic policemen will be seen at the intersections. And lo and behold, first time the city responded that traffic policemen are being seen on the intersections. And let me tell you, it made a difference. Even if we, if we are secretary to government of India, when we travel on the road, we tend to misbehave. If a traffic policeman who is a constable, who is paid the salary of a class four employee, as per the six pay commission, I think he is rated as class four employee, all of us start behaving. So with that psychology in mind, like we started working on it, that in peak hour, all my traffic intersection will be manned. And let me tell you, like, in some of the areas, in like Trans Yamuna and Western Delhi, first time they saw the traffic policemen. Otherwise, like, it was always missing. And they were doing what you don't know, you know and what I know. All of us in Delhi know what they do. And all of us, us as citizens also know that when we are caught by traffic policemen, what we do? We negotiate. Instead of 500 rupees, we pay 100 rupees merrily, which is pocketed by the policeman, and we are happy, he is happy, the whole system is very happy. So by this simple measure of putting a policeman at the intersection, Initially, the impact was that we reduced fatality by 20%. In first seven months, the reduction was 20%. Then we got bogged down in uh, the things which we, uh, I mean, we had to manage, of course, Commonwealth Games when like a lot of things were there. I mean, a uh, lot of infrastructure project, a lot of dislocation, a lot of accidents connected to it. The city was flooded with tractors because of the construction work and the deadlines which went on being changed from one to another and the city was taken to ransom and lot of fatalities and then of course, but still we managed with 200 fatalities which is about 10% reduction compared to 2009. If we analyze overall, like uh, the city is having so many problems that sometimes you feel like giving it up.
insufficient. The demands on traffic, demands on policemen is so much, and the city never learns. And maybe like things go on. So infrastructure problems, I think all of us know. Roads do not grow like vehicles have grown how many? 14 times. Uh, roads have grown maybe twice. So again, like now naturally, like uh, seven times vehicles are traveling on the same road length, which were there in 1981. So if all of you get into uh, uh, stuck in traffic jam, you know whom to blame, not traffic police. Inadequate ownership record. I think it's, uh, ours is a very funny system. Commissioner Transport Delhi admitted, I think uh, MLA is here or something like that, that 50% uh, of our ownership record is faulty. So we had in our kitty 28 lakhs notices which never reached the owner, which will never reach the present owner. And I tell, I told everybody including LG Delhi, Commissioner Transport, Chief Secretary, Chief Minister. See, why can't we have ownership record complete? The city has the culture, uh, the culture where like Form 29, I think it's 29, like you sell uh, this one and it changes hand 10 times and like notices and uh, challenge sent through the post never reach the person. See, like, what sort of 21st century we have got where, like, IT revolution is there. Might be, like, uh, my brother lives in Australia. He says, the moment you are stopped, on the screen of even a constable, flash are two things, the vehicle history and the driver's history. And here, vehicle history is missing, driver history is missing, and might be you are holding the baby without anything. We have got what we call in Motor Vehicle Act, second and subsequent offense. The computerized record, I think, I don't know, like we have created revolution all over the world in IT sector, but I, I don't know what is wrong with us, that in Delhi, like we have still not achieved where prosecution is documented. Nobody is punished for second and subsequent offense. Every offense is a first offense. Yesterday, all of us must have seen the very big front page write-up saying, okay, like, we'll have a point system. I am also part of that committee. And I asked them in the committee itself, okay, like, what, in what way you are going to implement point system when you don't have a documentation of prosecution? Might be, like, they wanted to complete the uh, report, committee report, without answering any of my questions. They say we'll have a point system without any point system being recorded anywhere. So, like, I think we are awful. We don't have this one. Like, in one of the cases, like, I caught I noticed one uh, vehicle with a grave violation and like my trail went to 10 persons, ultimately 11th was caught because I wanted to make an example out of him. And let me tell you the effort was, it required two full days to catch the owner, catch the current driver. So naturally our prosecution is bad, our road discipline is bad because we don't have even the ownership record, even the driver record, the vehicle record, nothing. Everything is an absolutely myth. Okay, yesterday they talked about increasing the fine. I am sure okay, like with the increase in fine, the city will be somewhat disciplined. Let me tell you, like people who know the Commonwealth Games, first time I think people who are from, I'm from outside, so I don't know what used to happen earlier, but people from Delhi tell me that first time in the history of Delhi, Delhi was tamed, Delhi was disciplined, people were scared, and they followed the lane, they followed the traffic rules, and that's why we could manage the Commonwealth Games. And the trick was simple, 2,000 rupees fine, section 144, possibility of arrest and all the city which is indisciplined overnight became disciplined. The moment Commonwealth Games finished, notification withdrawn and we came back to the normal, which is very bad. Okay, so like at this moment, fines are absolutely insufficient. 90% of the penalties are 100 rupees, which Deliite with their profuse wealth don't bother. 
They sometimes 400 rupees say, keep the chalan to you. We don't bother. We are in hurry. Let us go. We don't need the receipt. That is the that is respect for law. In any case, traffic policeman doesn't mind not giving receipt. But this profuse wealth of Delhi allow this one, okay, like keep pocket even 100 rupees, which is a meager amount for fine. My colleague was mentioning that technological upgradation is a must. The whole Europe, America, Australia, everywhere you have a technology. I mean, maybe only once I got a chance to go outside India for four weeks, some training course in Italy, and I was shocked that the Rome city does not have any traffic policemen on road. And we have got 6,000 of them, and that also is insufficient. Everything is technologically managed. Simple, because they have got good cameras, CCTV cameras, good ownership record, good driver record. Nobody dares violate any law, and city is managed well. We have got none. We are still struggling with that ITS tender, which will cover one third of Delhi. I mean, 200 crore rupees project financed by government of India. First tender, fail, no bidder came. Second tender, three bidders came. Two disqualified, one left, so might be we'll be going for retender. And even if that comes, let me tell you, let me share the secret. Even with those cameras, nothing will happen. Because our ownership record is not complete, our diver record is not complete. So even with the photo, uh, say, uh, footage of a violation, we'll be still struggling where to find the person, where to find the vehicle. But okay, I think the city needs, sometimes it's fashionable to invest so much of money in technology without realizing that we don't have the wherewithal of grassroots management. I think city has got one of the biggest problems, this insufficient parking. I think now they have models on the issue of parkings and city will have more and more in times to come because with 70 lakh, uh, 70 lakh vehicles, uh, with hardly 10,000 parking in the city authorized, I'm sure there'll be more road rage events, there'll be more uh, disharmony because city has not ca never cared to develop sufficient parking structure. Even today, parking on the road is free and we love it. The theme given was regulation versus enforcement, which is my pet subject also. The traffic police, like we last year, uh, one year, we have experimented with regulation. I mean, regulation, my force doesn't like, but I said, okay, you don't have any choice till I am joint CP traffic. I believe in regulation, presence on the intersection, they don't have any choice, they are doing it, and the effect is there, maybe like uh, congestion is less. Maybe the traffic policemen's earning have gone down, but maybe like overall road discipline is better. One word about city, uh, this one, observing traffic rules. I don't know what is the problem with us. I think we are genetically indisciplined. Why do we have this problem like where, like uh, we don't, we, f I mean, I keep on saying that we follow traffic rules only when there's no choice. Given choice, we don't follow it. I don't know what is the problem with us. Like, if we, we flagrantly jump the red lights, we do all sorts of violation, and the most funny thing is we wear helmet, not for our safety, just to escape chala. I mean, as if like, uh, it's somebody else who will die if there is an accident. The city, in its wisdom, exempted women from wearing helmet. And let me tell you, in Delhi, nobody, no women wears helmet because it's soft. So we do not observe any security norms which concern us only unless it's compulsory. So I think the city has to have a serious thinking, like why we, we have got all this discipline, that unless somebody is there to check us physically in the, for traffic violations, we do not believe in observing rules, and we observe only when there is no choice. Talking on enforcement, which is very dear to my, our heart of our traffic policemen, 
even with less emphasis on regular uh, prosecution average 10,000 prosecutions happen every day. I mean, I, I don't know what sort of city we have got. 10,000 is recorded, prosecuted. For what? Triple riding, red light jumping, RC violation, permit violation, improper parking, no entry restrictions and what not. And let me tell you, if you start taking cognizance of all the offenses which happen on the road of Delhi, it must be more than a lakh every day. So out of 10, only one get prosecuted, and that too he gets away with, say, mostly 90%, 100 rupees fine. And if he is happy with the policeman, he'll give you 50, and he'll save even that 50 also. Prosecution, not a deterrence to bring discipline on roads for re obvious reasons because fines are insufficient. The possibility of being caught is very less, maybe 10%, and possibility of getting away is quite high. I mean, over a period of one year, everything used to be a revolution. Uh, so like, uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, it's a commentary about the legal system we have got. This is permissible only in our country. I checked up with other countries also. Like it never happens outside, but we have got in our wisdom, we still permit that one. You kill half a dozen persons on motor vehicle accident. It's a bailable offense. Again, you come on the roads, drive, and you have got again license to kill. And there, here, I checked up with some of the blue lines, famous or infamous blue line divers record. They are involved in more than even 37 accident cases, killing about 60 odd people. No conviction in no case in fatal accident end in conviction. Still, we permit people to have a driving license and like kill people. I think uh, uh, it's a serious, serious issue. Why do we permit, like maybe we are too much, and uh, numbers are very high, so we don't mind like if overall in the, in the country one lakh people get killed, it doesn't matter. Again, if with the existing law, like you can drive without a driving license, so why should you go for driving license? Because you know like, Penalty for driving without a driving license is 500 rupees. Maybe like uh, my colleague, uh, people from outside will not believe it, that you can drive without a driving license and if caught, which is very rare, you pay 500 rupees fine and still drive back to home.